السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household, his companions May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless them all and bless every one of us and grant us all goodness in this world and the next my brothers and sisters the heat is intense i am feeling it secondly i know you've been sitting for a long time so i will cut my talk and thirdly inshallah i hope to see you tomorrow by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are brothers and sisters of ours following across the globe and we acknowledge you too may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you as well and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all goodness we face difficulties in our lives every one of us we face a lot of challenges we face so much and that is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah created us in order to go through obstacles and challenges that's the purpose of creation he made us so that we can have problems did you ever think of it that way you might say where did you get that from surat al-mulk first number two Allah says الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. It is He who created death and life in order to test you. What's a test? It's an obstacle. It's a challenge. It is something that is a situation that you are being watched to how you react and what you do that's the plan of Allah when goodness comes in your direction what do you do when evil comes in your direction what do you do when there is hatred enmity jealousy and the qualities of the heart that begin to develop in your heart do you eradicate them do you do something about them or do you allow them to flourish and do you become a person who's filled with hatred jealousy etc when there is adultery to be committed gambling perhaps alcohol and so many other things that are haram or prohibited as you know what will you do it is put in front of you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test you if you stay away from that which is haram you have succeeded Allah says it is he who created death and life in order to test you who from amongst you has the best deeds لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا In order to test you, who from amongst you has the best deeds. So all of us are in this test at the moment and Allah wants to see who from amongst us has the best deeds. Even the expression on your face is a deed. So don't just sit there looking all depressed. Smile. Smile. You become a better person. So many people who have developed their character and conduct, their expressions are so positive that you would never guess what they are going through. You would never dream that they have problems far greater than yours because when you see them, Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Oh, fine, what's happening? Okay. You don't know what that smile is hiding subhanallah so my you want to know if there was an exception and if there were if there was anyone who was not tested from amongst us well before the age of puberty you're just being taught the ropes but the test has not begun so it's like when you enter the school you learn for the entire term and the examination only begins at the end of the term when you enter this hall and mashallah you have to sit down and now you are asked the questions and you know the answers you just have to put them down so it begins at puberty in a similar way where subhanallah you were born there's no writing of your deeds it's a bonus you're still learning you make mistakes you drop you stand again you carry on and so on and then there comes a time when the pen begins to write against you or for you 
Once you've arrived at puberty, everything is written. Subhanallah. Did you fulfill your salah? No. Why? Because I had on me Mac makeup, which was worth 200 Trinidad dollars. How did you expect me to just wash it off when it wasn't even one hour since I put it on? Well, it's written. What you said, how you thought, written down. Was that the right answer? Up to you. It's like me asking you, what's one plus one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? And you say, how could it be two when the time now is four o'clock? <laughs> Same. What happened? You know what's the right answer, but you're just fooling yourself. Allahu Akbar. If you died in that condition, that would have been the last salah you were ever able to fulfill. And guess what? You didn't do it. Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, so this is why we say everything is a test. Up to the point of death, you will be tested more and more. And the bigger the test, the greater the opportunity of getting a bigger certificate. You know, if you write your primary school examination, can you go now to the airline and say, I need a job? Well, what certificate do you have? Primary. I passed my grade seven. Hmm, you know, what do you want to do? I want to fly the plane. Relax. Relax. You need a big certificate to fly the plane. Well, I have high school. I did O level. Here it is. I got all A's. Wait, 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 wait. You have all A's. You cannot fly a plane yet. It's not good enough. The test you had is too small. It needs to go deeper. It needs to go far deeper. You need to have a massive examination. You need to spend years struggling, toiling. You know how it felt. Those who are slightly older, my age, you know, we're now the grandfather stage. So those who are grandfathers here, subhanAllah, you know how it felt the day you graduated from college. Finally, you never go back to school again. Rip these books. Oh, gone. Out. That's how it felt. It was so good because why? Something extremely interesting. You worked hard. Now you've graduated. But when you were at school, you were spending sleepless nights studying things you sometimes didn't really understand. You just had to memorize history of people you never knew and would never know. But you had to know what year they were born and how much mischief they got up to. We had to struggle because of the mischief of those who committed mischief out in Sri Lanka, for example, a long, long time back. And we suffered and we wrote it down and we failed some of those exams. So guess what? They made us repeat them. Go back, study again. Why do you think I'm saying all this? Because those are the tests that we endure in order to get a little certificate of this world. My brothers and sisters, you will have to endure much more in order to get the certificate of Jannatul Firdaus and paradise. So Allah will perhaps put in front of you something huge. You lost a loved one. That's your examination. That wasn't grade seven, by the way. That was a big test. What did he do to you? It should bring you closer to Allah. Suddenly you're diagnosed with a disease, cancer. May Allah grant shifa and cure to all those with any type of disease. Say Amin. But if you were diagnosed, what happened? You never ever dressed appropriately. Suddenly you're dressing appropriately. You never ever called out to Allah. Suddenly you're up for tahajjud. You never ever did things for the sake of Allah. And suddenly you're a charitable person. You were never ever a person with good character and conduct. And suddenly you're greeting people and you're suddenly reaching out to them. What did the sickness do to you? It made you a lovely person, close to Allah. So when you call out to Allah, Allah does not want to give you what He, what you are asking for straight away. Because if that was the case, your relationship with Him would not be prolonged. So for example, if a person, let's use the same example, diagnosed with cancer. May Allah grant shifa to those who have that. And it's prolonged and you go for one test and before you go for the next one you are making two rakaat two units of voluntary prayer voluntary you've never read voluntary prayer forget about voluntary even the obligatory you were not too keen with before that now obligatory on top of that voluntary you gave a charity 
and you made dua and you told people to make a dua and you said oh Allah I'm going for my test help me that the result of this test is now negative meaning there's no more cancer I've been for chemo upon chemo and then what happens you go for it and you're still positive what happens you cry you start thinking oh Allah why and so on but you still go back and you say ya Allah please cure me please I beg you ya Allah cure me and you don't know you might die without being cured but in a condition that you were weeping for the sake of Allah you were not missing your salah you were such a wonderful person you were the best you ever were in your entire life what a beautiful way to die but you didn't look at it that way you looked at it as though, you know what, Allah punished me. No, He didn't. He's softened your heart. He's made you such a good person. He's brought your family members from across the globe to be around you before you've passed away. What more do you want? Subhanallah. And He's given you the best possible death. You read your shahada before you went. What more do you want? If you were healthy, you might have died in the nightclubs. Possible. If you were wealthy you might have died doing the wrong thing so wasn't that the gift of allah that's why allah says Inna allah ila ahabba abdan ibtala. it is when allah loves a slave and a worshiper that he puts tests in his life or her life as a favor if every one of us were millionaires i don't think a lot of us would be seated here if every one of us had everything we wanted why would we feel the need to have a relationship with the maker for what but Allah says, no, we won't give you what you want. Not yet. We want to test you first. So we're going to give you problem upon problem. If Allah did not want to give us problems from the very beginning, childbirth would have been the easiest thing. Easiest. Popcorn. It's not. Do you know what it is? It's one of the most difficult moments because of its value because of the status of your mother in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the understanding of man and at that point Allah makes sure that you don't remember what happened as a child nobody from amongst us knows or remembers well we know but no, we don't remember the point of our own birth why it's Allah's plan it must have been a moment that was unique painful indeed difficult indeed but it's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was already a major issue so many women and ask them will tell you I wish I was dead Allah makes mention of Maryam alayha salatu wasalam, the mother of Jesus, may peace be upon him, in Surah Maryam. Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha, wa kuntu nasyam mansiyya. I wish I had been dead before this, and forgotten, long forgotten. But no, Allah says, no, don't worry, we'll make it easy for you. You'll forget about it. When? When your child grows up and develops into a beautiful human being who fulfills your rights but how do you expect your children to fulfill your rights when you have not fulfilled the rights of the one who created you and those children and that's allah allah tells me to do things i couldn't be bothered but when i tell my kids to do things i want them to obey where is the logic where is it so let's go back even the messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who were the chosen ones who were the beloved ones they went through tests examinations they went through a lot of hardship distress and difficulty and the quran is filled with their stories and verses relating to you and i what happened to them so I want to spend the next few moments telling you what they did when they were in those situations. So that if we look at those whom Allah loves much more than us and what they went through and what they did and how they called out to Allah, the focus will be tonight on how they called out to Allah.
Because all of us here need to call out to Allah. We need some inspiration. We need to be inspired. We need to feel good. Our problems are not going to go away. But Allah will grant us contentment. Allah will alleviate the suffering. Allah will help us through those issues. It's not like they're going to suddenly extinguish like you're turning off a light. Can happen by the will of Allah. But in most cases, Allah wants you to endure a little bit for you to get that PhD. For you to get a big certificate. So when you arrive on the day of judgment, you're resurrected with the VIPs because you were unique. Sab'atun yudilluhum Allahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhilluhu. Allah makes mention through the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of seven categories of people who will be resurrected under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day that the shade will be most needed and there will be no other shade. So there are categories of VIPs. Imagine you and I, may Allah make us from them. If we are from amongst them, there has to be something unique about us, right? You went through some major difficulty. So your certificate is on your head. Your flag is with you, subhanallah. And you're known. So when you go through calamity, when you suffer difficulty, use it as an opportunity to get closer to Allah. Smile. Allah will give you contentment. Let's take a look. Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. He was the son of Dawood, David, may peace be upon him. Sulaiman, known as Solomon in the English language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of his story in several places in the Quran. And one of those is in Surah Sad, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 35 about Sulaiman alayhi salam making a dua to Allah. What type of a dua? Today, every one of us wants money. We want sustenance we want wealth we want material items we have to have to a certain extent to survive i have to have money i did not fly here free they didn't just tell me you're going to deliver a muslim talk so here you are caribbean airways it's free <laughs> dreaming they didn't say that so we need to earn we do and when you have, it's a test. When you don't have, it's a test. What you do with it is a test. When you spend, it's a test. When you don't spend, it's a test. So the amazing gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taught to us through a dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam. He starts off by saying, Rabbi ghfirli, O Allah, forgive me. Imagine, if I want to get onto the right page, I need to seek forgiveness. If I've done wrong, the first thing to do to become your friend is to say, forgive me, right? Someone has wronged you. The first step to get to the right direction is for me to say, forgive me. Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Sulaiman alayhi salam wants to ask some big thing from Allah. He started off by saying, oh my Rabb, forgive me. How many of us, when we start a dua, do we start off firstly blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam because he came to teach us all the goodness. Had it not been for his sending to us, we would not have had this goodness. So we should always commence a dua by sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I want you to say aloud, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Thereafter, seek the forgiveness of Allah. Ask Allah's forgiveness. Or you may want to start by praising Allah. Oh Allah, you are my maker. You made me. You created me. I have none besides you. You have favored me. You have done a lot for me. You know when you are driving? Today we landed in Guyana. Right? And uh, in the car park, there was someone who came to us to ask for something a beggar may Allah make it easy for those who are begging for the right reasons and may Allah make it such that they don't have to beg anymore Amen. we beg from Allah his mercy Amen. so 
imagine if we gave her one dollar and she says imagine she did not do this i'm just telling you imagine she says no too little i'm going to go somewhere else i don't want this take it away out she throws it and it's gone what would you do huh what happened i gave you a dollar it's money how could you just do that if you see her the next day and she's asking you what are you going to do ah you're the lady who threw away the dollar yesterday get lost right i think that's very respectable actually if that happens right we do it to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot of the times where he gives us something and we say nah not good enough no ways let me go and earn it or get it in a way that's not your way my way you told me not to do it this way i'm going to show you i'm going to do it the way you told me not to do it and you're going to see me having everything what will he say okay you'll have it but you're going to spend it on medical bills maybe maybe you might spend it on the damage of your motor vehicles one after the other possible i'm not saying it's always the case no but it's possible you're going to waste it you might spend it on haram you might spend it on that which will result in the destruction of your home you might spend it on your children and they might consume that which was not permissible or haram as a result the energies they got were all negative so they were disobedient there you are i'd rather have had that which was pleasing to allah but it was less than to have had more but in the displeasure of allah so if someone comes up to you and says as you give them 50 cents thank you so much madam thank you i really appreciate this i'm going to go and buy an avocado now i'm saying avocado because in my part of the world it's almost free it's like one cent an avocado in fact if you come to me i can give them to you free the only thing is you've got to come to zimbabwe so the flight might cost you a thousand dollars so and that's because they grow in our yard you know we actually fill them up in sacks and donate them and i know in other parts of the world avocados like wow avocados you guys just donate them well, donate them yeah subhanallah allah has blessed us alhamdulillah i'm sure you guys are also blessed in your own way i wonder what you get here i still need to know inshallah i thought when we were landing i thought you guys had a lot of broccoli but i found out it was just the amazon jungle subhanallah <laughs> Allahu Akbar. From the air, it looks like broccoli fields, right? There you are. So my brothers and sisters, subhanallah, you thank the person such that they might take out another dollar or two and say, hey, if this person is so thankful for 50 cents I gave them, let me take out five bucks and give them five dollars. Take that, don't worry, don't relax, take it, just go, go, it's okay. It's okay, if you need more, tell me, I'll give you more. Subhanallah. Show gratitude to Allah for him, it's less than 50 cents. If Allah had to give everyone whatever they've asked, it would not displace what a pin displaces when it is dropped into the ocean or dipped into the ocean. Allah can give everyone whatever they're asking. Thank Allah for the little that you have, you will get more. La Allah says if you are going to be thankful and show gratitude I will grant you increase that's what Allah says here is Sulaiman alayhi salam he starts off by saying Rabbi ghfirli oh Allah forgive me forgive me forgive me he was a nabi of allah he did not do anything wrong but he's asking allah's forgiveness we do so much wrong days pass we have not sought the forgiveness of allah and we want him to give us things we want him to answer our duas start off with the salutation upon muhammad sallallahu then praise allah then seek his forgiveness and then listen to what he says Qala Rabbi ghfirli wa hab li mulkan la yanbaghi li ahadin min ba'di innaka anta al-wahhab O oh Allah forgive me and grant me ownership such that you are not going to give anyone after me this type of ownership you are the giver of gifts 
You are Al-Wahhab, the one who gives the gifts. Oh Allah, grant me that which you are not going to give anyone after me. Allah says, we loved that dua so much. There came a time, the very next verse, verse number 36 of Surah Sad, Allah says, فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الرِّيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ Allahu Akbar. Allah says, we gave him so much that even the wind was put under his control. Imagine the wind, control of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Blow north, it's blowing north, but harder, blows. Blow these guys away. Okay, okay, no, no, it didn't get that far. But anyway, subhanallah, imagine the wind moving with you, subhanallah. He could speak to the ants and the other creatures of Allah. Imagine the birds coming and say, yo man, what's up? Subhanallah. Imagine the birds and they chirp back at you. Yo, yo, I'm alright. And you? Subhanallah. It would be beautiful to speak to the other creatures of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But guess what? Sulaiman alayhi salam was given that. He heard the ants. There's a surah named An-Naml. Why? He made the dua. Oh Allah, forgive me. Give me something you're not going to give anyone after me. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam had much more. But different departments. You need to know that. Different departments. But Sulaiman alayhi salam spoke to the ants. When the ants, the one ant told the rest of the ants, Hey, the army of Sulaiman is coming and they are going to trample over all of you unless you get into your houses. So get into your houses. And what did he say? He stopped his entire army because of one ant. Sulaiman wa junooduh wa hum la yash'uroon That was the discussion between the ants. Allah says, one ant told the rest of them, enter the homes so that Sulaiman does not trample over you without realizing. And Allah says, فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكًا مِّن قَوْلِهَا Sulaiman alayhi salam he smiled in this beautiful laughter of his at the statement of the ant. And he stopped his whole army and he let them go. I have a small quick lesson to learn from the ants. One ant told the rest of the ants, enter so that you are not crushed, right? Because they loved each other. They cared for each other. They didn't say, hey ant, come here. What part of the world do you come from? <laughs> Which part of India are you from? What part of Pakistan are you from? What part of wherever are you from? And so on. Are you, are you dark skinned or light skinned? What's going on? Okay. The dark skinned guys stand here. The light skinned guys stand here. Now I want to quickly come and tell you guys what's about to happen. And you guys, you're not going to know. That's not what the ant said. The ant gave a call caring for the rest of them. Hang on guys, don't be trampled. That's how we are supposed to be caring for the ummah and for humanity at large. We should not want to see harm upon another human because life is sacred. The one who gave you the life, Wallahi, the same one gave life to the others. Just remember that. The one who gave you the life you have right now is the same creator, the same giver of life who gave life to the others. That's all I want you to take back. Just remember that. Life is sacred. Your responsibility is to convey a good message. To try and keep convincing people to do good until you die. Those who are convinced, alhamdulillah. Those who are not convinced, it's between them and Allah. There you are. Just keep on reminding. So Sulaiman alayhi salam asked Allah for something. After seeking forgiveness, Allah gave him so much. So when we ask from Allah, ask Allah, whatever you want. You are allowed to ask Allah, Oh Allah, I need a Mercedes. Oh Allah, make sure it's an S-Class by the way. And a 2018 model maybe, I think. You know, something tip top. You know, if you're really going to ask, make sure it's the top thing. You know, don't just say, Oh Allah, by the way, I need a car. What car do you want, man? You know, may Allah make it easy for us. And work hard to get one. 
you know, Mercedes not going to drop from the ceiling somewhere here and say, Oh, Allah, thank you, bro. The car came here. You know, so they'd have to wake you up and take you to the mad hospital. Subhanallah. So you are allowed to ask specifics. You are. But I want to show you one step higher. I want to show you one step higher. Let's take a quick look at another Prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said I'll talk for 45 minutes. It's actually 30 minutes, 25 seconds. So there's still some time. There was another Prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who went through a lot. He had, at the beginning, everything flowing. Allah blessed him with wealth. Allah blessed him with children, beautiful family. Allah blessed him with so much. And after a while, Allah took away one by one. This went and then that went and then the children went and then his health went. Who was that Nabi? Who was that Prophet of Allah? Yes. Who was the Prophet of Allah? Ayyub alayhi salam. In the English language, Job. May peace be upon him. Job. Ayyub alayhi salam. There is a narration that says that at a certain point when he was not well, his wife told him, why don't you call out to Allah? To alleviate your suffering and he says I'm embarrassed why because Allah gave me for so many years so much and it was for so many years now my test has only been for less than one tenth of that time or a fraction of that time and I must already call out to him no let me endure a little bit but there came a stage when subhanallah he called out Ayyub alayhi salam called out in a unique way. So unique that I want to teach you something so that you can be inspired. Let's take a look at Surah Al-Anbiya, verse number 83. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam. وَأَيُّبَ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ Remember when the Prophet Ayyub called out to Allah, he called out to his Rabb. Remember, now why is Allah saying this? To teach us how to call out to him. He made mention of the other dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam. He made mention of a dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam in another place in the Quran where Sulaiman alayhi salam says, Oh Allah, I thank you or oh, grant me the ability to be thankful to you. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'matak. Oh Allah, grant me the ability to be thankful to you for what you've bestowed upon myself and my parents. Who were his parents? Dawood alayhi salam. How is it? Subhanallah, gift of Allah upon Dawood. He was the dad and Sulaiman was the son. A quick way of remembering it. The D is for dad, Dawood. And the S is for the son, Sulaiman. You'll never forget it again, right? That's how I remember it, by the way. Okay, so Subhanallah, he's making dua for his folks, for his parents. And here in Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah makes mention of the du'as of so many of the prophets. Go to Surah Al-Anbiya and look at it and look at the meanings of it and see the du'as that Allah makes mention of of the prophets, the supplications. They called out all of them. Allah says, Wa Zakariya idnada. And Zakariya, the prophet of Allah who did not have offspring, he called out to Allah, Oh Allah, don't leave me singular. Grant me offspring. And Allah says, Fastajabna la wa wa we answered his prayer and we gave him Yahya, the child, John, subhanallah. How many of us don't have children? May Allah bestow upon you children. Keep making the dua. Keep making it. Allah knows. He's waiting. He's watching. He knows the right time. But Ayyub alayhi salatu was salam was on another level. He did not ask Allah what to do did you hear what i said he did not tell allah what he wants no he didn't say oh allah i want you to do this for me he did not say oh allah cure me he didn't say that he didn't say oh allah i'm going through health problems he didn't say oh allah i have financial problems he did not say oh allah i lost my children he did not say that why 
he knew that Allah knows better than him what happened to him. And he knew that Allah knows better than him what is to be done. So when I have a problem, who knows my problem better than me? Allah. When I want a solution, who knows which solution is the best? Myself or Allah? Allah. So if my faith is very strong, I just need to say, Oh Allah, you know what I'm going through and I know you're the greatest. Done. Did you hear that? Oh Allah, you know what I'm going through and I know you're the greatest. That's it. He was not tempted to say, Oh Allah, do this for me, do that for me. Allah says, Ayyub called out to us and he said, Masani Abdurru. Trouble has affected me. Harm has affected me. That's it. Oh Allah, something negative has got to me. And you are the most merciful from amongst all those who have mercy. That's all. He didn't say, restore my health, give me back my children, do this to me, do that to me. No. He just says, oh Allah, what has happened to me, you know. The negative that has happened to me, you know. And I know you are the most merciful from amongst all those who have mercy. More merciful than a mother, more merciful than anyone. Allah says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ضُرُّ Allahu Akbar We responded to him and we alleviated all the suffering that he was going through. That's another level. In fact, there is another prophet of Allah who did something similar. Can I tell you who? Same surah. A prophet called Yunus, Jonah. The one who was swallowed by the whale. The one who was swallowed by the whale. Yunus, Jonah. May peace be upon him. Alayhi salam. He was also known as Dhunnun. Why Dhunnun? Because Annun is the fish. Which means the man of the fish. Moments ago, Sheikh Musleh was saying, this man and that man and the shoelace man. Yes, this was the fish man. Allah calls him the fish man. Wow, don't worry. He was not Guyanese, by the way. Um, but obviously it was, it was, it's meant in utmost respect. It's not derogatory. If it's derogatory, it's not allowed. It's not allowed. You know, fat man, fat man. Don't you dare say fat woman. May Allah forgive us. Okay. So, the noon, Allah says, Yunus alayhi salam, when he was upset and angry and he ran, he ran away or he went away and he thought Allah would not decree something upon him. Allah says, he called out to Allah from the darkness of the belly of the whale, in the darkness of the water. He called out to Allah. What did he say? Did he say, oh Allah, I'm in the whale. I'm stuck. Help me. Cure. No. In actual fact, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. Do you know one of the most powerful du'as is this du'a. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimeen. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Did you hear that? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimeen. There is none worthy of worship besides you. Glory be to you. I have indeed been from amongst those who have done wrong. That's all he said. That's all he said. What did he say? Oh Allah, I did wrong. None worthy of worship besides you. I have transgressed against myself. And there is none worthy of worship besides you. I declare my faith, my conviction in you. Do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ We responded. We responded to him. And we removed the distress that he had. 
done. What was his supplication? He didn't make a big dua. Oh Allah, I'm in the whale. You know, as I was going, it swallowed me. You know, I got hurt when I entered. You know, something happened to me here and so on. And now I don't know, it's dark here. What's going to happen about the food? And so, oh Allah, help. He, all of that, it's okay to call in that way. It's fine. You and I are weak. We can tell Allah, whatever. But you need to know there is a level of conviction whereby you know Allah knows much more than you. You just have to say, oh Allah, you know what I'm going through and I know you will help me. Done. Done. But that requires conviction and wait for Allah. Keep on repeating it. No problem. Keep on repeating it with conviction. When the time is right, it will happen. So those are the examples I wanted to give you this evening. And I wanted to raise the issue of being inspired by the lessons or by the messengers and the lessons we learn from the way they supplicated, why they supplicated, how they also went through challenges. Ayyub alayhi salam, he had health problems more than any one of us here. Did he give up? No, it made him strong. He got closer to Allah. Really, when things happen negative in our lives, Use that as an opportunity to get closer to Allah. When things happen positive in your lives, use it to get closer to Allah. You suddenly have a beautiful deal worth millions. Don't do the wrong thing with that money. Don't. Something went right. You happen to marry the guy of your dreams. Remember, that's a gift of Allah. It's a test. He's going to test you. He's going to test you. When you have your wedding, do it nicely. Bear in mind, you're a Muslim. You have responsibilities unto your maker. The day of Eid, the day of happiness, what do you do? Make Allah happy too, subhanAllah. Whatever you choose to do on that day, make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased. So this, my brothers and sisters, happens to be how they called out to Allah. I've just given you an example of some of the messengers. And I want to tell you, go back, read Surah Al-Anbiya. Allah speaks of all the prophets, including Nuh, Noah, may peace be upon him. Allah says, you know, a long time back, Noah called out to us as well. And we responded. We responded to Noah, we responded to everyone. We will respond to all of you too. But bear patience, bear patience. Don't think that a few negative things in your life happen to be the end. Nothing is the end. The end will only come the day that Allah chooses for you and I to leave or the day that Allah chooses to end the whole of creation. Subhanallah. Up to that time, you still have hope in Allah and His mercy. If you were to seek forgiveness, He would forgive you. If you were to ask Him, He would grant you, He would give you. And I end by saying, brothers and sisters, you want the help of the Almighty, learn to help the creatures of the same Almighty. Remember that. You want Allah's help, help others and Allah will help you. You want Allah to reach out to you, reach out to others and Allah will reach out to you. You want goodness in your direction, be good to others and Allah will be good to you. You want help, help others. Like I just said now, my brothers and sisters, remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives there is no barrier. He can give you everything and anything at any time and every time. So have hope in His mercy right up to the end. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Iqra kitab Allahi tarqa jinanahu wa tanal azim al-ajri wal-ghuf. رتله روي القلب من نفحاته كالماء يروي لهفة العطشان